So this movie is aiming to document a conversation on what a regenerated world could look like. Mm. What conversation would you like to start? Remember I said English is my seventh language. If you can explain to me regenerate. Unpack it for me. <laughs> Regenerate, I think it's like reinventing, yeah, rebuilding. The overall arching thing about regeneration is actually the verb of of generativeness. It's it's generous, it's generative. The idea of giving back to what you what you take from. So for me the overarching verb is actually about bringing life back into everything. And it should be there anyway. It's just we've got so separated from it that we've taken it away from the way we live, the way we work, the way we run our economy. So for me, regeneration is bringing that, is life, can we bring life back into that? That very reason why we're here is for life itself. The kind of regeneration for a new world or for a new society would mean that we learn from the past mistakes. Um, I want to see us having a low carbon development and that low carbon economic development that would be the kind of development that does not destroy or distract our environment. We, we have to reverse soil degradation, we have to farm in a way that doesn't break down soil organic matter. Soil organic matter is vital for storing nutrients, for storing water, uh, producing more resilient farming systems and unfortunately a lot of our large-scale industrial agriculture has, has depleted our soil carbon over time. You know, on one hand you've got conservation, which is preservation, and on the other hand you've got agriculture, which is destruction, and there's this conflict between the two, while with permaculture we're basically integrating that approach. We're using farming as a means to regenerate natural systems. There's a lot of, of, of challenges that uh, rural people are faced with, so I think that the, it, it's much more relevant to start the conversation with the rural people who are mostly affected and, and can, are struggling to make ends meet. I think my, my, my passion is, um, is to see a world where people can afford to feed themselves, where we can empower people, both the commercial agricultural sector, we need them to feed the urban population because that's the only way they're going to receive food, but the rural population are empowered to feed themselves. Food is that meeting place, it's that middle ground where ecology and environment and geography and history and politics and policy and art and culture and tradition and family and friendship, it's, it's kind of this great base that holds a lot of other spheres and realms and things. Um, so when we talk about regeneration, for me, I, I begin there. We need to start by getting our hands in the soil, by connecting with the living systems and the living technology that surrounds us. We have to start accepting that we are inextricably interwoven with all of these living systems around us and that we don't stand apart from nature. So this movie is aiming to start a conversation on what a new world could look like. What conversation would you like to start? Well, currently looking at how most of the kids are, what I term screen agers, you know, they're looking into a screen and they're so disconnected from who made their clothes, what food they eat, where that food comes from, you know, like what happened to the, the creature that provided that food for you or, you know, the person that actually farmed that fiber for you. Humans don't feel that they are earthlings anymore. They somehow feel above or over it and that is causing major problems because if you're not feeling part of something you don't care for it. So um, I would like to see a world where people reconnect with being part of Earth. I would like to see a society that thinks more about things and thinks more about the connectedness of, of things instead of seeing uh, things in separate uh, pockets, you know, where we're always aware and that, you know, our actions, whether negative or positive, um, are part of, of you know, a part of a, a whole system. So, you know, think about the domino effect, you know. So, where would you like to start? If you could imagine this regenerating world taking place, 
um, start the conversation? I'd, I'd say equal opportunities for all, uh, a better education system, a stronger state uh, with policies that drive a regenerative strategy, a state that uh, cares about the people, because I feel like a lot of South Africans, uh, especially the, the, the marginalized one, the poor, are still poor. What is the asset base? What is the strength of South African society in terms of resource? And I'm not just speaking about resources that are uh, traded uh, commodity uh, resources. I'm speaking about the energy that we have. Are we using that sufficiently? For our people first, um, and are we educating our people? Well, I think that what I would really like to see is a society where there were opportunities for everybody. We can't make everybody equal at the stroke of a pen, but we ought to be able to find ways in which people can find meaningful work, ways of living in society, ways of living with one another that are not riddled with conflict and hostility. And of course, a lot of that means socioeconomic justice. But it also means building personal relationships across all sorts of divides that are part of our history. I think for a regenerative strategy to work, um, we need cohesion as well as connectivity. And at this point, I don't think South Africa is a cohesive country. Having grown up in South Africa and being born here, we're all very aware of the things that make us different from each other. But we never get the opportunity to actually discuss what connects us beyond that? If you were born here, or you find yourself here at this particular juncture in time, there's a reason for it. Firstly, perhaps we need to find out that reason for ourselves, but share it, because we need to start sharing our, our experiences, you know. It's been in my heart and my spirit for a couple of years now because every time I look at South Africans, I look, especially on social media, I always ask myself, why are we so angry? Um, and I get to hear from a different number of people that indeed we are a wounded nation. At the height of our racial tensions in the country, I was like, okay, fine, can we just find a way to talk to each other? Can we just find a way to sit around as different racial groups and target the specific things that we're battling with as a country, both black and white, like youth unemployment, our economy that's refusing to really grow, the rent that's low, um, our political landscape and our discontent with our leaders. Those are things that affect us, whether we're black or white. Can we just pick on those things and talk about them and sort of map up together a way forward. And there is a great sense that now that there is political equality for people, that, that, is, that the work is done. But it isn't done because of the backlog of heritage and inherited privilege that so many of us have. And we forget that that's not undone in one generation or even in two or three. So it's incumbent on those of us who benefit from that privilege to be looking for opportunities to make a difference to others. One of the mantras we have in Open Streets is about respecting each other as human beings. And for me, you know, respecting one another more, fundamentally loving each other more, that has to be the base of regenerating a future that's going to work better for all of us. So it's about how we relate to each other in meetings, how we hold meetings, how are we communicating with each other, so although it's a big thing, respect and love are big strategies in a way, the, the playing out of them is quite mundane and, and quite, um, yeah, quite straightforward, but requires a lot of consciousness. What economic model are you working with? You know, what social patterns are you bringing in? How do you govern yourselves as people? You know, we've got a centralised system on the one side, which I perceive to be the problem, centralisation. While permaculture on the other is decentralization. It's bringing everything back to the earth, back into community, localizing everything and bringing power back into the hands of the people. Because right now, humanity is disempowered. Everyone's looking to the centralized system for whatever it is they need. It's not providing. So regeneration is cultural. It's kind of around knowledge. That's for me where my work comes from because the knowledge then becomes about practice 
and thus cultural in you know, regeneration and revival. Um, and that then immediately stems down into the way we interact with our environment and, and how we um, share that with others and, and become not so much an individual but part of a broader community. I think for me the most important thing is to design and live in a country or in a city that is resilient. We're talking about a, a system that is resilient to external shocks. And by shocks I mean the effects of climate change, extreme weather patterns, uh, drought, flood, fire, uh, and then that moves into more human-created issues like um, perhaps uh, oil shortages. A long-term plan needs to say, how do we feed, water, clothe, house our people in a way that empowers them? How can people take responsibility for their water, for their food, for their energy? And when you start to put those sort of systems into place and envisage those sort of systems, you're empowering a whole lot of people. Every single human has a dream. And every person deserves that opportunity to express that dream. And to do that, they need to be able to take care of their basic needs. And so the, this resilient or regenerative society that we are putting on the table, that we're wanting to start a conversation about, is really about that. It's about people and about people being able to access themselves and their highest good and their purpose. And once they can step into that, we're going to start talking about a country that looks and feels very, very different. And, and, we'll, and we'll start to meet our needs. Creating sustainable systems, by its very definition, is going to create a generative future. The definition of sustainability, I like to quote Bill Mollison on that one, is a system which over its lifetime uh, yields more energy than it took to create in the first place. So by doing agroecology, by designing and implementing permaculture systems, by designing and implementing software systems which support the flow of value between these various systems, we are creating a generative future.